to to to, to get our our solution introduced to, to all of you, the the end users. IPS has been a great uh, a, a great partner of Alcatraz for the last couple of years. In fact, they've as kind of follow up after we get through today's presentation. Uh, I, I know they've got a demo unit, I believe, at their Lexington location. So um, we, we we can certainly schedule some some additional demonstrations and and uh, um, presentations if you'd like down the road. I, I'm actually out of Indianapolis, Indiana as well, so certainly not far from the the Kentucky and, and Ohio markets. Uh, I, I I travel often and and often have a uh, a demo kit with me as well. So if you would like to schedule uh, some follow up through through IPS, certainly excited to get out and 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 get this uh, get this solution in front of all of you. So uh, again, excited to be here. R really excited to to share this solution. It, it it's probably a little bit different than than what you're used to seeing, and, and we've kind of coined the the phrase here at Alcatraz. Uh, you can see our, our our slogan here: autonomous access control. And, and, and thinking through that, literally from every aspect, and again from the lens of 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 of, of IPS as well as through the lens of 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 all of you folks as end users that have joined, we've tried to make this whole experience of, of accessing the different spaces throughout our building literally as self-driven as possible. So so you'll hear me reference autonomous. You, you'll hear me kind of throw in some other terms like frictionless and just the convenience of literally using your face to to access your spaces so the 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 days of leaving your badge at home or uh you know forgetting it in the car or you know not not being able to find that all, all of those kind of worries and concerns go away as literally we'll we'll use your 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 face as the key so to kick off just just to go through our agenda uh real quick this morning um obviously we'll be introducing our product uh, our solution, uh, the 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 hardware you see kind of spinning on its axis there, is called the Rock. So when you, when you hear me reference the Rock, that is our product. It's both a hardware and software solution. So we'll certainly introduce the product to you. Uh, we'll we'll talk through some of the challenges challenges that we see out there that all of you, perhaps the security directors or um, facilities folks, may come up against, and and how we solve those issues. I'll give you a little bit more background into who we are uh, as Alcatraz. Um, privacy always comes up when we when we talk about face authentication, so we'll we'll certainly share with you how we address those concerns, and then and then I'll I'll, I'll certainly share with you some some fantastic use cases. Uh, it, um, we, we we've got uh, a number of, of deployments out there, and, and excited to share where we've helped folks from financial institutions to, to data centers to large Fortune 500 organizations solve their problems. And then as Taylor mentioned, I'll, I'll pause a few times uh, throughout the presentation. Certainly want to make sure we get your questions answered. Uh, so, so as Taylor mentioned, uh, we'll, we'll pause. You, you can speak up or, or type any of those questions in the chat. But a little bit more about Alcatraz before we get started. So we were founded around five years ago out in the Bay Area, hence hence the the the, the reference there to to naming the, the company Alcatraz. Um, our founder, kind of a, a quick story on him, uh, Vince. He was actually part of the Apple engineering team. He he was part of the group that brought Face ID to the iPhone. So I don't know how many of you folks out there are iPhone users and leverage the newer technology on the phones to literally unlock your phone with a quick glance using your, your face as that key. And obviously from a consumer standpoint, I think that's kind of helped pave the way, right, for, for, for two things, using biometrics and people becoming comfortable and familiar with using things like your fingerprint or your face to access literally everything. I mean, if we think about it, the, your 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 emails, your bank accounts, your your plane tickets, your sports venues and tickets, you know, everything's locked on your phone these days. And, and and we're leveraging face as that ID to unlock our phones. So that's literally where we got our vision. So our 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 roots are stemmed around that concept of how do we make physical access control uh, inside of our buildings as easy as it is as a, as a quick glance at your iPhone. So that, that's kind of where we got our start. 
again, that was around five years ago, and and, and we've grown into a a, a fantastic company of, of 50 plus employees. Uh, we, we've got a great leadership team with both that kind of tech uh, innovative background out in that Bay Area, uh, as well as folks from the security industry. So uh, a little bit more about, about myself. I've got about 20 years in the security industry, both as an integrator uh, as well as, as as manufacturer sales as well. So I, I certainly understand the challenges, both looking at it again from from the integrators, uh, from IPS's point of view, as well as what all of you are, are encountering out, out in the field as well. Uh, all of our products are designed here in the United States, and they're actually manufactured out of a plant in Plano, Texas. So everything's made in the USA. Uh, knock on wood, uh, we, we haven't had the, the supply chain challenges that, that I know uh, a lot of you are probably experiencing with other products. Uh, obviously, be, being manufactured here in the States, we're, we're not waiting on our products to to be shipped overseas. Um, uh, we've also done a fantastic job of, of stocking raw materials. So haven't had any issues there from a supply chain standpoint and, and have plenty of rocks on the shelf. Uh, if if some of you are familiar with some of the, the, the mandates out there, uh, especially around NDAA, you know, we are certainly compliant with, with NDAA, um, simply meaning that we're not partnering with, with, with uh, some of those manufacturers out there that you've probably heard in the news. So a, as we kind of look at, at our customer base and we look at the challenges that I, I know all of you are probably pulled into conversations around, how do I solve for this? Or how do I solve for this? We actually check a lot of boxes. And, and, and as I mentioned, you know, we're, we're using your face as your key, right? Your face becomes your ID. The first place people typically think, and, and, and I'd, I'd be curious to get some feedback from all of you um, when we get to that Q and A, is is how familiar are you with with biometrics? You know, we 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 often get lumped in to to that biometric space because we're we're using your face as that key, and a lot of times people think about biometrics and 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 they first think, well, let, let's leverage biometrics to to heighten our security. So you know, I, I mentioned access into data centers. Uh, we've got a lot of deployments. Uh, securing IDF closets, MDF closets, secure laboratories, things like that where uh, the, 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 and maybe it's audit or, or compliance driven, where you as an end user, you need a solution with heightened security to say, hey, I want to make sure folks accessing these higher security spaces carry two or maybe even three forms of identification and we call that multi-factor. So I'm going to kind of start here in the middle, and apologies for that. But the rock can actually be configured to be set up in this multi-factor mode, if you will, to where we say, all right, to access this space, and Taylor, I'll, I'll use you here as a, as a reference, I, I want to not only authenticate via Taylor's face, but also her card, also her badge. And we want to make sure that those two, those two keys match, right? So Taylor's not getting in with, with my card, or, or, or vice versa. So two factor is that card plus uh, plus face. We can also set the rock up in single factor. So looking to the left there, if you're thinking about kind of this convenience play or the frictionless aspect of just approaching a door, being very quickly authenticated via your face and, and, and you're through the door. So when we are pulled into a lot of these conversations, that the topic is often, hey, what's our return to work strategy, right? We're, we're, we're hopefully on the heels here of COVID and, and people are coming back into their workspaces. So we often get asked a lot of questions around, how, how do I remove some of these barriers? How do I make this um, more uninterrupted from a flow perspective? It, it, again, not reaching for your pocket, your purse, your bag, looking for your card. How do I authentic authenticate you with just your face? So the rock could be set up in that fashion as well. We've even secured some, some super high secure type locations. Uh, I'm actually thinking of a nuclear power plant that, 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 that we provide security on where their requirement was actually three factor. So in this case, we set the rock up to, to see pin, card and face. So there's a lot of different options uh, in how you deploy the rock, keeping in mind that, 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 that we're basically that, that face aspect, but we work with those other technologies. 
Now, the and, and I'll deeper into this later, but but just to kind of give you a, the high level overview here, the, the rock's got multiple sensors out on the edge, so it's it's got multiple uh, different camera technologies. And as a part of that, we can basically evaluate the space. And, and you'll hear me talk later more about how we leverage AI on the back end of our solution as well. So imagine the rock installed in an area like, like what you're seeing here in a hallway uh, going into a door to access a space. The rock will literally learn that environment and it'll start to identify when people come into those spaces and it, it will quickly start to authenticate people based off their face. Well, what we can do with this now is not only authenticate and let people through the door, but we can in real time flag a security event if somebody's piggybacking or tailgating behind somebody who either swiped their card or was authenticated with their face to where we'd say, hey, I knew the first person, I knew the second person, but somebody kind of snuck in you know, before the door went shut. So we can alert and, and, and let your, your security folks know that, that, that a tailgating detection ha has happened as well. Now, earlier I mentioned the rock has multiple sensors, right? Multiple ways to monitor that space. Well, well, one thing we do with one of those sensors is we actually share that video feed. And, and, and this is huge from the perspective of, okay, something happens, right? You wanna go back and, and check who got into your, your server space, or you wanted to find out uh, where that breach of security came in from a tailgating event. Where do you go? You always go to your video system, right? That that's that's the first place people go back. I always say video is the ultimate verifier. Well, we actually share uh, the the video output from the rock, uh, and, and this can get piped into your existing video management solution. So we can very easily share that feed to where this image could pop up on your security operations center, and and, and now you've got the event, you know, the, the whatever triggered this this situation. And now you can pull up the video to go back and actually see it. And if you think about it, with, with where the rock is installed, we're giving you a, a, just a, a brilliant, a, a fantastic shot of whoever's coming or, or going through that door. It's, it's face height. We're showing you the whole room. Whereas today, you might be leveraging a camera down the hall that, that might be looking at the, you know, the back of the person's head. So this is this is another big differentiator with us that we share that video and it's and it's an absolutely brilliant shot of what's happening at that door. So I, I think this will be a good spot, Taylor, to, to kind of pause and just see real quick if there are any initial questions out there. All right, let me check the chat. So we don't have anything in the chat yet. Does anybody have a question before we move forward? Hey, Jason, what, when does the video get activated? Good, good question. The video is always there. So it's a constant stream that we can push into your video management solution. And at the end of the day, the rock kind of becomes a camera to my earlier point to where it's an on VIF type feed. So it'll always be um, flowing into your VMS. It, it's a matter of, of when you react to that video, right? You, you could go back to that event, or if there is a trigger from a, from say a tailgating event, you, you could go back and look at that pre-video, current live video, and, and, and we always have the capability to go back and, and look at post data as well. Good, good question though. Anybody else? Perfect. Well, okay. you, you, you heard me mention that the rock can, can plug into any video solution. Well, we, we also pride ourselves into the fact that all of these great things I just mentioned, right? All the problems that we can check, we, we've architected this solution to where the rock can very easily bolt on top of your existing access control solution as well. So if you're sitting there thinking, well, I've got Linnell or I've got Software House or you, you you don't need to be concerned with that, and and I'll show you an architecture slide here shortly, uh, in in how we accomplish this. But one thing I love about our solution is we don't require deep software integrations to make this solution work with whatever you have. So literally, this solution can bolt right on top of what you've got installed right now. No need to rip and re replace. No need to to no need to do any heavy lifting. 
as far as expanding ports. Uh, so if you if you think about it, looking in the past, everything that you've had to throw out a door, right, to 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 offer this level of protection, maybe it was a pin pad, maybe it was a camera, you know, and all of these things communicate back um, ultimately to to more than likely a security operations center. We can now solve all of these problems for you with this one simple kind of elegant, you know, elegant device here at, at your door, the, the rock. So to talk more a, a, about the rock and the solution itself, this is the rock in its typical environment, right? We're, we're installed just to the side of the door and, and the rock can go on either, either side of the door, typically just above the existing card reader. Well, a, a couple things to note, again, using your face as the ID, all of the, the processing happens actually at our device. So, so th this is advantageous for a couple of reasons. One, there's not a lot of different parts and pieces that IPS would have to come out to install, right? We, we don't have gateways. Uh, th there is server software, but we don't rely on the server, the, the, the system working back in, in the data closet. We don't rely on that for, for, for that match or that authentication to happen. All of it happens at, at the edge here. So if we were to, to say, lose connection to, to the server for whatever reason, the rock will continue to function out on the edge with any faces that have previously been enrolled. And that's super important. You heard me mention AI as well. So, so I'll, I'll give you a couple situations here where we leverage AI and that kind of machine learning aspect of, of our solution. You heard me mention earlier that the rock learns the environment in front of the door. Well, we can actually measure people's intent. And I saw this as an integrator as I've deployed Bluetooth technology on your phones. So if you're using an app or Bluetooth back to a to a reader, I've seen this where you're walking down a hall and, and you you trigger that reader and you, you hear doors unlocking behind you. Uh, but, but but because the, your Bluetooth reader saw that that credential as you approached. Well, the rock actually solves for that differently. We 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 look and, and measure your body, the, the intent of you approaching the rock. You know, shoulders turn, face towards turns, turn towards the rock. Your your hand out, looking for that handle. We we can measure that intent. So if you're just walking down the hall and, and the rock authenticates you, but 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 you you know you cruise on by, we we won't see that as your intent. So that's one way we leverage AI. The, the other piece is the machine learning. And, and you can appreciate the fact that we're using your face as your key. Well, our, our faces change. Uh, I, I've actually got a little bit more facial hair than I typically would. And the rock would dynamically update that profile. M maybe I changed my glasses. Maybe I've lost some weight or gained some weight. The rock dynamically through machine learning updates your profile. And this impacts things like accuracy down the road uh, things like speed. That's why you'll 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 see in a presentation here. Uh, we we authenticate very very quickly. So these are a couple of ways we we leverage AI. I'll, I'll share one other situation uh, in a future slide, and you'll see this come into uh, into play when I show you how easy it is to enroll new users into the system. So here's a couple uh, examples. So so. Let, let's show you the rock in action, right? And, and I mentioned the, the, the different modes earlier, one factor versus two factor. Two factor is the, the concept here. And again, this might be for, for maybe a, a higher se secure type situation where the, the user approaches. And again, it's, it's, it's frictionless from the aspect as she approaches the rock, we've actually authenticated her via her face and we were literally just waiting for for that second form right we were waiting for her to swipe her card and i'll play this and again again and i'll encourage you there's some some feedback status uh via the led ring on the rock itself you'll you'll see and it happens very fast hopefully you can see it it'll turn blue for a split second it, and that blue is the indication okay the rocks authenticated her we're, we're not going to unlock the door until we see that card and we see that those two things match. So again, thinking about other biometrics where, where maybe you present your, your finger, your hand first, and that kind of kicks off the process to say, hey, this is Taylor's card. Now let me authenticate via her face. Using face, we're actually accurate enough to authenticate her before she even approaches, before she even swipes her card. We're just making sure those two things match. 
Now, single factor, and, and again, we've deployed these in, in executive suites, lobbies. Uh, I'll share a, a scenario with you where we've installed the rock on turnstiles. So thinking about kind of those high throughput type applications, um, certainly a fantastic use, use case there as well. But in single factor, we're literally just looking for authentic authentication via the rock, via your face. So that's what one factor authentication looks like. Now, uh, I, I mentioned privacy. So, so certainly we, we wanna address this head on, right? And, and speak a little bit to our solution. Um, anytime privacy comes up, uh, you, you know, you, you think about kind of that, um, that, you know, what, what are they, what are they recording? What, what are they, what are, what information do they need to, to enroll new users? And, and you'll see this on the next slide from an enrollment standpoint, super, super simple. And, and this is really our, our biggest differentiator is just the ease of getting people enrolled into this solution. But, but what you're going to see here is that an enrollment takes place out in the field. So, Literally, when, when we enroll you, we, we will basically sniff out your, your badge information. So your existing card reader system, your existing user credential with your badge, and we associate that with your face. And literally, that's all we know about you. So if we were to enroll Taylor today, I'm not at a computer terminal. I'm not, uh, I'm not at a web browser. I'm not inside a utility typing in Taylor, her first name, last name. I'm not taking any personal information about her at all. Literally all I'm doing is is if again if you're if you're an iPhone user you, you've experienced this we're we're building that face profile and 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 merging that with the badge data and that's all we're recording. It's all encrypted, it's stored in in, in just our database, it's not shared with any third party um, um, uh, solutions out there. So we're not covertly collecting data um, we're, we're not retaining any information about you. And the biggest thing is here, users are opting in. You, you have to register into this solution, right? And, and that's via this enrollment process I'm going to show you. So that's authentication. We're using your face strictly to authenticate you, to get you through your access control solution. Completely different than face recognition. And, and that's where you're maybe hearing some, some of the um, you know, the Facebook, the, the, the meta, uh, meta type type data where folks are leveraging cameras on our street corners, leveraging cameras in our lobbies, pulling faces and comparing that to third party databases. That's absolutely not what we're doing here at Alcatraz. So hopefully you can kind of understand and appreciate the difference between recognition and, and authentication. But I mentioned the biggest piece here is the fact that people are knowingly registering into this solution. And obviously it's all housed, it's all enclosed uh, within your organization. And we've got two brilliant ways of getting people enrolled into our solution. And honestly, in, in my opinion, and again, having been in the industry, this is our biggest differentiator, just the ease of enrollment, the ease of use from a usability standpoint. So we've got two options. The first one we call manual enrollment. So Maybe this rocks is at your security operations center, or it's it's in an HR area. Um, we, we've we've put enrollment rocks in say lobby areas. The rock is in enrollment mode in in in, in this example, and a new user would walk up, and he would present his badge, just just you know the same badge he's been carrying for years, and that basically triggers the rock to say, hey, I see a new face, I see a new badge. Uh, I, I'm in enrollment mode, so let's enroll this gentleman. So I'm going to play this again. He swipes his card, that triggers the rock, and then the rock gives you some feedback, right? On the on the display of the rock itself, it says look left, right, up, down, look directly at the device, and, and that's the entire process, team. L literally, this individual's enrolled in the system, and across the network, we've pushed that secure, that encrypted profile to all the other rocks in the system. So if you've got five, 10, 100 rocks, however many rocks you may have deployed across your site or sites, you only need to come and do this once and you only need to do it at, at one rock and, and, and you're done. So again, couldn't be any simpler. Now we've got another function we call auto enrollment. And, and you might consider this for, for, for larger 
populations. I, I started to share a, a story earlier. I was actually out at this job site just before Christmas where we deployed 64 rocks on turnstiles. Well, we enabled some of those turnstiles in auto enrollment. And, and literally this site, it's out in Allentown, PA, they have 1,300 employees coming through where they, they needed to, uh, to, to get these folks enrolled. So auto enrollment leverages AI on the edge at the rock to basically learn your face and build that profile I was describing over time. So what you'll see here with the rock and auto enrollment is we're going to let the gentleman through the door with just his card. So we're, we're just looking for that one, that, that one card swipe, right? Well, over time, as he approaches and, and presents his badge, the rock's going to get a little bit different data each time, right? Maybe it takes four times, maybe it takes six, but over time, we're going to leverage AI and machine learning to build that profile. We'll get a, a slightly different angle each time. And what you're going to see here on this final approach is, okay, the rock gathered enough information and now has him automatically enrolled in the system. And you'll see as he approaches, he gets authenticated with his face. He, he, he's off to the races. He now authenticated through this door with his profile. And just, just like I described before, we'll push that, that, uh, that enrollment, that profile to all the rocks on the system. So no easier way out, out, out there um, looking at, at deploying biometrics to get people entered into the system and, and distributed across your site or sites. So um, fantastic solution here from, from an enrollment perspective. Now, we, we mentioned we solve for other issues, right? We're not just authenticating people and letting them through the door, whether that's single or multi-factor authentication. We can also solve for tailgating as well. And, and I mentioned that piggyback scenario, right? That's where we're looking for folks who are not authenticated and they're slipping behind the door after somebody unlocks it via their face or card. And, and, and this is this is piggybacking. So I'll, I'll show you this first user. She's authenticated. She goes through the door and then somebody sneaks in behind her. She's not authenticated. In real time, we can we can trigger this as an alert and send this to your access control solution. So now um, maybe, you, you know, through I.O. and, and your access control, you, you sound an alarm, you, you, you play a, a sound bite, you send a push notification to the security director, HR person, you know, whatever happens downstream, those are all things that you can program inside your access control or video solution. We're, we're simply the trigger saying, hey, we've detected that this has happened. Now, I, I showed you a piggyback scenario. We, we also solve for for what we call crossing so let, let, let's say taylor came out of that door uh, that was a secure space and somebody was loitering outside right maybe next to that that plant there and then they catch the door before it goes shut and crosses taylor's path that's called crossing we we can detect that as well the the third form of tailgating that we can solve for is what we call unauthorized entry and this is a scenario where maybe somebody propped the door or they have it temporarily blocked open and, and somebody comes up and they're not authenticated. We don't know who they are. They didn't swipe their badge and they go through a door that's been propped. We, we call that unauthorized entry. We can detect that and, and send the same uh, type of alert to let you know that, that that's been detected as well. So real quick sneak peek, uh, we, we do maintain portal software and, and basically the portal software is where you'd come to set up the, the, the rocks function, right? Whether it's set up for single factor, du dual factor, enrollment, but we also keep track of these events. So from an audit or reporting perspective, you can always come here and, and, and check those tailgating events like what we're showing you here. So we would detect that that tailgate had, had taken place. We'll, we'll show you a snapshot of what happened, right? So, so this person uh, we don't know who they are. We, we just know their badge number, right? So we'll, we'll give you their badge information. Was the authenticated person, and, and then we'll show you uh, who the tailgater was. So again, from a management perspective, uh, we, we certainly maintain these records. But, but I'll be honest, nine times out of 10, most of our customers are still managing these solutions inside of their existing access control. Because we're sharing those alerts, and this just happens to be 
a screenshot of what that would look like inside of Secure. So Secure got the alert from us, from the rock that a tailgate had taken place. And then obviously if your solutions are integrated with video, uh, you can pull up that video feed as well. So a lot of times people leverage our portal to, to, to maintain profiles, uh, to, to set up the rock configuration, and they typically continue to manage their alarms in their existing system. Not to say you can't come here and, and, and manage and, and, and um, pull reports on, on the different reports. I, I guess I'm just letting you know that you've got options. And if you're used to your, you know, your dashboard, your single pane of glass to, to manage your security, uh, we work with all of those platforms to where you could continue to do so. So th this gives you a, a kind of an idea, right, of, of what that video feed looks like. Again, a fantastic shot of the area showing you that the entire door, uh, as long as your video management solution accepts uh, on, an on VIF type stream, which they all do today, uh, we support both profile S and profile T. So again, that's a constant video stream, you know, back back to the, the, the prior question. The rock at this point from a video perspective just looks like any normal camera. So you, you might be wondering from an architecture standpoint, how does all this come together? And, and this might bode well uh, better for, for the folks that are on from IPS, uh, unless you're intimately involved in the security design, you know, not, not understanding all the roles of, of the folks that are on. But you heard me say earlier that, that this, this solution was built literally from the ground up to bolt on top of, of whatever you've got installed in the field. And that was super important for us. We, we, we don't want to have you rip and replace your, your existing access control solution. Um, and honestly, we're agnostic from that standpoint. We don't care what, what, what panel is back in your closet that, that is unlocking your doors today and managing your cards. This could be any manufacturer. Basically, the rock sits on top of your existing cabling infrastructure that is wired out to your reader. So we literally physically wire um, off of your reader into the rock and then loop back out to the panel. So when you think about that, okay, I've got existing cabling and 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 we support the protocols. Um, you know, probably 80, 90% are, are leveraging a protocol. It's called Weigand. We support that and OSDP. We basically sit in the middle. And, and again, thinking about that enrollment process, we sniff out that badge data fuse it with your face, and then send that same card data that already exists, you know, you're a user in your access control, we send that same data to your panel. But think about how we're doing this. We're, we're on that same cable, we're on the same port, the access control panel literally doesn't even know we're there. We just look like a standard card swipe, but we're leveraging using your face instead. This means you don't have to add ports, licensing, et cetera, to your backend so solution to add Alcatraz as a, a as an option here. Now, I, I I commented before that we're gonna sit on that same cable. You you, you do still need to, to to drop a network cable, so a Cat 5e or a Cat 6, out to the door. Which you know we, we we've all got IDFs in, in close proximity, and that's one of those cables that's pretty easy to go in and, and drop in at, at most locations. To where the, the rock also does sit on your network. We actually get our power over that network cable. It's called PoE. Uh, we do require a PoE plus. At that point, the rock's on your network. Uh, th this is how we're able to open up that that OnVIF stream out to your video management solution. But that's also how the rock communicates back to our platform software, that, that software I showed you before. And we're super flexible in, in how you deploy this. A lot of customers today are, are leveraging our, our cloud platform. So. Obviously, from a, a control perspective, you know you're always on the latest and greatest, right? There's there's redundancy, there's backups built into a a, a cloud solution. So we can certainly support you in in in, in that fashion, in, in that cloud model. However, if you're sensitive uh, to to cloud and 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 you've got an IT team there to to help kind of support an on-premises type deployment, we support that that option as well. And we've got two variations here of what we call an on-prem deployment. The first is is basically a turnkey solution. So we'll 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 provide an appliance. So it's a pre-built box um, uh, appliance with our software on it. You you install this. Um, very very simple. 
we, we can also offer just our software that 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 can be installed on a customer provided infrastructure you know whether that's a virtual machine or or a physical machine and we can install on on windows uh, we can install on linux so again support all sorts of de deployment options to, to to try to make that super simple you can see we, we we've gone through all the rigors right the 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 solutions um ul ce listed these these two center stamps here ccpa and gpr revolve around privacy so we we've gone through the third party audits we're certainly compliant with those california privacy acts with the the you know typically this comes up more in europe but with the gdpr compliance but we're really proud of this iso 2701 and and, and this really again from a, a solution, from an IT data security perspective, we've been through the third-party audits and penetration testing, uh, where they evaluate our software and give us this ISO certification around around data security. So, uh, and I know I, I've shared this right, but but a couple of use cases um, were, were very popular in that in, in those higher secure type type scenarios where. Uh, you're adding multi-factor for for data centers, for IDFs, uh, even security operations centers. I I was uh, more recently, just within the last few weeks, out in Los Angeles. Uh, we we've deployed inside of MLK Hospital uh, downtown LA, and Mark Mark Reed's the security director out there. Uh, basically, through conversation, what we learned to to Mark data security, you know, all the HIPAA um, re requirements around healthcare. In his mind, securing his IDF closets, the the, the data, the, the back end of the house of, of the hospital was was of key importance. So we've got rocks on every floor of MLK, all five floors, uh, securing those IDFs. And then we've also got a rock on his security operations center's door uh, to, to make sure that only folks authenticated and allowed into that SOC area um, are, are authenticated with just their face. We talked about... Um, Entrances into labs. We talked about uh, um, pharmacy access. We talked about labor and delivery as as next steps, um, as far as kind of the evolution of where he plans to expand with the rock. I mentioned banks earlier, and and, and we secure a number of, of different financial institutions. And, and it's interesting whenever this this solution is presented into the kind of the C level folks, right, to make that determination uh, to deploy within the banks. We always seem to find ourselves on the top floors being installed inside the executive suite areas of buildings as well. And again, they see it for that convenience play, right? Um, once they're in their area, uh, they can leave the badge behind and, and, and simply be authenticated via face. So certainly think about that as well. Um, uh, think about those lobby applications to, to quickly authenticate people uh, via face. We've done elevator deployments where we've integrated in and, and done um, destination dispatch where, you know, JB walks up. We know that he resides on the on the fourth floor. So in communicating that that, that JB's here at the back end of the elevator solution, you can automatically call the car and, and send them to their, their proper floor. So there's a lot of things you can do leveraging basically our rock as that key, as that as that form of authentication. Turnstiles have been big for us, and and you probably saw that 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 ease of of being authenticated, the, the quickness. So that's why high throughput type applications like Turnstiles has been very popular for us as well. Now, in in kind of this this COVID uh, arena, we've had a couple of customers that that have come back and they said, hey, for audit reasons, we need to make sure our our folks are wearing their masks, and and we were able to build this into our solution as an analytic to say, hey, we're gonna authenticate you with your badge, but we're gonna only let you through the door if we can see you and we're de detecting that you're wearing a mask and that you're wearing it properly. So if you've got use cases where uh, you're requiring folks to wear a mask inside your building, heck, leverage the rock, leverage our solution to, to, to ensure that people are wearing masks throughout throughout your facility. And this is one of those things that, that, that we, we call it face mask detection. This is something that you can just switch on. Um, it, it, it comes out of the box. There's not an additional license or anything like that. And those are some of the neat things that we can do with the AI and, and, and with analytics in addition to just authentication. 
I I mentioned MLK, right? So we've got, we've got a great um, slide here uh, sharing kind of that feedback from from Mark, which I, I know I already mentioned to you uh, around where he he deployed these solutions. And 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 this is is kind of that that wrap slide, right? So so we can wrap up here with some of these key points that I know I've touched on. I'll, I'll, I'll tell you from a from a, a solution deployment, and, and obviously maybe this is not like anything you've looked at before. Um, again, to my earlier point, looking more to the right here, super simple from an installation standpoint. I mentioned when we first got on IPS that they have a rock at their Lexington location. They've put it through the paces. They've got a fantastic demo if you want to see this, but it, it, it very easily bolted right on top of, of, of their access control solution that they already had deployed. So think about that from a from an install. You know, this is very easy to bolt on top. From an accuracy perspective, super, super accurate. Um, in, in this space, we are measured off of false accepts, right? And and what this number means is that that one in 100,000 um, uh, chance where you would be falsely authenticated. So very, very accurate. You know, think about your your biggest sports complexes, right? You, you can fill that and, and fill it, you know, half up again. And um, so, so, so very, very accurate from uh, from that perspective. Um, again, comprehensive. We're 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 doing more than just authenticating via face. We can help you with those tailgating situations. Um, help you with that high throughput, like the the turnstile use cases I shared with you. You you, you saw in that video how quickly we can authenticate. And, and and just from a planning perspective, we, we say roughly 30 people a minute, right? So we're just under two seconds from a match speed perspective. Love love to get the solution in front of you. Um, you know, I, I mentioned I'm out of the Indianapolis area. Obviously, your IPS partners are in Cincy, Columbus, and kind of that Lexington area. Um, Hey, we'd encourage if you'd like to uh, to, to kind of demo and and kick the tires. We, we've got a fantastic demo program where we can offer a, a rock on a stand like you're seeing here, with a card reader integrated right into it. And this simply means that 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 you can easily install this, bring it into your environment. We're, we're not requiring you to to physically bolt the rock to a wall just yet, but this will give you the option to. To, to, to run through that enrollment process, see how quickly uh, the, the rock can authenticate you. And, and you, can, you can just as easily wire this into a solution if you want that whole experience ar around access to a door. So know that we've got programs out here. We can work, work with you through IPS uh, to get some demonstrations in place. If you'd like a, a more intimate demo, I can also bring one of these into your office. I'm, I mentioned I'm not far away from you. Um, so it's certainly willing to, to partner up with IPS uh, for, for any use cases or applications uh, where, where you'd like to install the rock. So I'll, I'll open it back up. Um, we, we've got about 15 minutes for any other QA, uh, but, but anxious to hear your feedback as well. All right, we have a couple of things that have um, shown up in the chat. One of them I answered, but I just want to um, reiterate it for anyone who joined us late. Uh, there was a question about if you're experiencing long lead times for equipment, and my understanding is currently no. Yep, cur correct? currently no. Uh, again, the rocks manufactured here in the States, uh, we've got plenty on the shelf. And, and from a raw raw components uh, perspective, um, we, we don't anticipate any issues th this entire calendar year. So um, no, 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 no issues from a, from a lead time perspective. Perfect. Good to hear. And then the other question that is in the chat is, can the second factor authentication be a pin instead of a card? <laughs> it, it can. It, and I, I smile because I, I, I literally, um, was working with a customer up in Milwaukee yesterday that was de deploying uh, not with a pen reader. Now, to answer the question, yes, the the input into the rock could be a, a pen, and literally, literally, we we just need some device that communicates via Wigand or OSTP. If it's currently communicating into the access control solution with that that card that credential right being a, a pen in this case, we can absolutely bring that into the rock 
to, to, to learn your pen and associate that with your face. So yes, I smiled because yesterday we actually deployed this in lieu of a fingerprint, uh, an existing bio reader to where we wired the bio reader into the rock to where now they're doing finger and face. And, and this is almost uh, uh, considered a, a demo or, or trial. They actually want to do away with all their bio readers. But we were able to wire that into the rock as that initial kind of card trigger um, as 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 that card. So, yeah, we, we support any scenario, any way to get that current credential into the rock and then downstream back to your panel. We, we support. Good questions, though. All right. Are there any other lingering questions out there? Hey, Jason, uh, really good information. And I, I think there's even more features in this than the first time I saw the product. You know, <laughs> yep. a year ago. It's, uh, it's pretty incredible. Um, the discussion on the turnstiles really kind of caught my ear. Yep. Uh, I'm just curious, are you seeing them use the rock as opposed to say a traditional credential like a card and that helps with the you know the the, the thorough thorough put there the throughput there so the the site i was at just before christmas uh actually i was at, i was at two kind of in, in q4 one in boston one in allentown pa and then both of those deployments uh they had the rock in addition to a card and, and, and this, they deployed in this fashion to, you know, grab those early adopters and, and not everybody was coming back to work and, and, and all those scenarios. So they wanted to make sure when they returned, if they weren't yet enrolled into the into Alcatraz, that they could still get through the turnstiles with their card. But it's interesting that that Allentown PA site had 1300 employees and, and last uh, the last conversation I had uh, with that security director he said, JB, we've got we've got a thousand people enrolled into Alcatraz. So call it 10 thirteenths of their population were that early adoption rate, right? Where where they're 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 cruising through the turnstile with just their face. So it can be set up either or. And, and that's how both of the deployments we've done more recently were set up. It was card or face. Okay. In Good question. <laughs> Uh, we're starting to have trouble finding cards out there. They're, they're, <laughs> I've heard, yeah, uh, cards and readers, right? Starting to run scarce, so yeah, uh, can't right, can't can't run out of your face. Hopefully, so. yep, yep. I I was I was at a, a a site last week up in Chicago and and heard about the cards and they can't get readers either. And I said, hey, I, I just showed you what you can do. Let's just put rocks everywhere and just use your face. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, the camera uh, in the device, uh, it, it, just curious, are you seeing any customers uh, uh, not putting in a camera, right, on, like in a lobby area, and by, you know, not installing the camera, you're it, really helping to fund the rock. Are you seeing any kind of migration like that? We, we have. In fact, I, I'm thinking of a, of a scenario where uh, a, a customer installed rocks. They've, they had 38 floors. Of, of office buildings. So you come off the elevator vestibule, you can go right or left into either office suite. And they actually leverage the camera on the rock in that in that vestibule. You know, it's not a huge space, but but the w when they evaluated the design, you got a rock on this side, a rock on this side, you know, giving you the, the, the cross view, that whole vestibule. They literally, th those were their two cameras to watch that space. They, they so, so in in this situation, they didn't have to run extra cable for those two, uh, for the, those two camera locations, and they had a, a a great shot of that whole vestibule. So, yeah, in, in that case, it was almost like the rock became a, you know, a, a free camera that that accomplished what other cameras would have done. So, yes, we we've seen people uh, leverage it in that fashion. Now, this was a greenfield, right? So this this was new construction; it was planned that way. So it's not always that that customers are leveraging the camera, but it but it's there as an option. You can turn it on, turn it off. Uh, there aren't any additional licenses from our perspective to to take advantage of that feature. And then uh, last question: um, outdoor applications. No, nope, great question. So the the rock I presented you uh, today does not have the IP and IK ratings to to 
to to survive outside. So it's an indoor solution. However, our roadmap um, does include a solution that will be IP and IK rated for outdoor use. And um, late Q3, early Q4, we're we're going to start looking for for beta candidates with a full release in Q1 and next year. So great question. T today we need to think about deployments indoors. Uh, which most of those use cases I, I shared with you before are certainly indoor locations, but but we appreciate that that we want to get that whole envelope right the, those outdoor uh, lo locations as well, and that's certainly an important part of our roadmap. Great, thanks for the feedback. Appreciate it. Absolutely, thank you. I would personally love an outdoor application of this at at our door here at our yep. office. Yep. Jim's smiling because he knows ex he knew exactly what I was going to say. And, and, and honestly, in the Midwest here, if you think about our designs, a lot of the buildings have vestibules and, and we've installed in those vestibules that the rock does a fantastic job of, 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 of leveraging auto exposure type features to where if there's a lot of sunlight coming in a window behind you, we're, we're still able to get that good image to, to do that authentication regardless of varying lighting conditions so if you've got a vestibule um uh nine times out of ten folks here in the midwest do and and, and that's where we kind of put that exterior choke point gotcha are there any other questions before we close things out hi i've got a specific use case i'd like to run by you to uh, see how it will respond um so we have a secure system with mm -hmm. the escorted visitor capability turned on so the way mm -hmm. this works is say i've got three visitors um, we will come up and they will each swipe their cards first the door remains locked then i swipe my card as the escort and enter my pin at that point the door unlocks um, so if we introduce the alcatraz to this scenario how will that play out because it's probably going to recognize me as soon as i walk up um, let throw the order of cards and things out of whack or well it that, that that's a good question the the rock would authenticate so if your guests were enrolled we we would send your your guests credentials just like you know that if they were swiping their card in addition to to, to your face i guess we'd, we'd have to work with seek here to see if if that sequence is important or if they just you know see it all in, in the same general area, but but your your point stands, the rock would authenticate faces as you approach that kind of four foot bubble in front of the rock. Um, so from a timing perspective, I could see that being a little bit tricky, but we could certainly work with Seek here to understand if sequence is important. Now, what you could do is, in well, even if 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 uh, if they're swiping their cards first, to your point, if if we saw your face first, then the sequence would still be thrown off. Yeah, that that that's an interesting scenario. I, I honestly, I I'd have to, I'd ha and and we work all the time with with Software House, um, so I, I'd have to run by whether or not that that sequence is the kind of important piece there. Okay. Oh, but but I, I I I like that I like that scenario though. Appreciate it. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Are there any other questions? All right. Well, with that, I'm going to cut everyone loose about five minutes early. Um, I will follow up um, with an email um, containing the link to the webinar replay in case you want to go back and review anything and i'll attach some additional information information from alcatraz as well and then um like jason was saying if anyone is interested in a more one-on-one -on -one demo or you need a visit to your your facility we are more than happy to arrange that um just let me know um, when i send the follow-up email or get with your ips account rep and we will make that happen and with that i wish everyone a good rest of their day Thanks, everybody. Thank you, Taylor. Thanks.